All right, so I had a forum question that I was going to answer. So we have a cube here. We're going to name it left. We have another cube here we're going to name right. Then I'm going to grab this thing and then duplicate a vertex and put it in the center. And then I'm going to grab these two and then grab this and go to edit mode and do control P, which is make vertex parent. So now these two objects are parented to this by vertex. So if this rotates, it doesn't uh, affect their position, but if it changes position, it does. So now if I press W, he faces one side. If I release, he faces the other at the moment. So this is kind of cool and all, but a more useful setup. I'm doing property right, then it's a boolean. If right is true, then track to this guy. And if it's false, we track to the other one. And when it starts out, it's facing this way. If I clip this, it should flip around. Okay. So now, we have key press A, and then motion, and then travel on the world distance. Well, I'm going to set this to uh, the physics object to move instead of the uh, armature. So I'm going to add a cube and make it invisible and call it a rigid body, or actually dynamic. It's probably better in this case. And I'm going to make it so that you can only see that it's wire in the uh, viewport. So now there's a wire cube. I'm going to parent the graphics to the wire cube and turn the graphics to no collision. And then turn these to no collision. So now when I start it up, they should all fall. All right. So now I'm going to add a ground. So there we go. So now I'm going to lock the uh, translation on the X. So now it can't move off the 2D plane. And then I'm going to do keyboard sensor A, keyboard sensor D for a WASD setup. And I'm going to do a motion. And then also, I need to link across to this to change a property. And then, we'll set the linear velocity to 2. Okay, so now I just need to do the same thing for the other direction. Property right is true if you hit D. And we need to apply a force the other direction, a set of linear velocity or whatever we're going to do to move. So now when I travel one direction, he faces that way. When I travel the other direction, he faces that way. So there's a 2D rig. And you can add like a ray check to make it so that he can only run when he's on the ground. Just like this. Ray. Negative z-axis. And then the cube is one unit in radius. So 1.1 should detect the ground. And then we connect this up to and. And now, when you try and run when you're not on the ground, he won't be able to run. And we can split these like this. 
and put these up here like so and now you can change direction and air but you can't uh, apply movement and just to prove that I'm gonna move the ground down and then I'm gonna set this to static okay that did not work Oh, I have to probably hook it up. That's probably a good idea. There we go. Now I can change direction and air, but not apply force. And then I'm going to turn this back to dynamic so it'll fall. Turn this off true. Or onto true so it starts facing right. So there we go. And to kind of see what's going on, I'm going to scale these two faces to zero. You wouldn't normally do this with your sprite. Oh, I don't want to remove all of them. So I'll grab each face and do remove doubles. There we go. So now we have an arrow that tells which direction we're facing. So there's your basic 2D rig. Alright, I hope this answers your questions, and if you have any more, just let me know. Um, you can mark these invisible, by the way. And then they're not seen. So from here, you just need to play your walk animation and stuff like that, and I can cover that in another video if you need help.